Okay. Uh, so, um, would you would you like to do a little introduction to yourself before you go into the um, chapter? Because I mean, basically none of us know each other at all, really. Um, so, where where are you based, and what are you currently are you, are you studying or working or something at the moment? Are you right? Um, so, I'm from Nigeria, and. I'm currently a graduate student. I'm doing NLP from the University of Porto, Portugal. Right. Um, I've been using Python, but um, recently um, I was using R for my data analysis, and uh, I fell in love with R, and I'm uh, quite a bit doing R now, but uh, I was using Python. Um, yeah, so I'm basically a student um, working on natural language processing from Nigeria. Cool. cool. Um, right, okay. Uh, and, no, no, no. and also, um, I have not done anything related to Shiny. Um, this is my first time encounter with anything in this book with Shiny as well. Sure, sure. Um, Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It seemed like a, a quite a good chapter to 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 start with. Have you have you done any of the other book clubs that R for DS is yeah, organizes? Um, yeah. Um, R for Data Science. Have, um, we are currently at the last bit of uh, R for Data Science, and um, um, and today as well, I'm a little bit busy <laughs> before this chapter because immediately after this chapter, we are starting. Advanced Art Book Club, and um, will be the lead for the, that book club, Advanced Art. So <laughs> immediately after this <laughs> chapter, I will jump into another course for the Advanced Art Book Club. Right, cool, cool. <laughs> um, right, so uh, during your talk, I'm uh, I'm going to mute myself, and I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box, um, and if anyone. Um, raises any interesting questions or, or, or something like that I might I might butt in or would you would you be happy for them to kind of yeah, sure. just yeah, anything, speak anyway. up and, yeah sure yeah sure sure okay great um okay so uh would you like to um start off with your um your 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 presentation then and we'll we'll have a chat at the end as well about you know the and everything Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, is it recording? Okay. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, today we're gonna jump into the first chapter of um, second section, I guess, of the book, um, which is workflow. And. We start the chapter by motivating why do we need workflow? And here is a quote from the last part of the book from Hadley, which says his superpowers that he got that makes him to do so much is because he heavily invests on improving his workflow. So he highly recommend it. So because of the chapter is nothing like technical, it's not reactivity, it's not server, it's not UI, um, it's just um, some of your prior knowledge from R sometimes, and some investigative skills that you may have to pin down some errors and um, do some kind of uh, workflow basic. So workflow makes the process of writing shine as more enjoyable and help your skill improve more quickly. So this is why we need um, to um, learn this chapter uh, to make writing shiny as more enjoyable at the end of the day, not so frustrating. Right, so what this chapter contains it's basically a three sections. Um, the goal is to learn the basic development cycle for creating apps. 
Number two is to learn how to debug shiny apps. Uh, so inevitably error may happen and uh, you need to find a way to sort out the error or pin down where the error comes from. And lastly, um, oh, lastly is how to write what is called reprex, um, self content reprex. Um, so a reprex is some kind of um, reproducible code that you can share with anybody that they can replicate the code on their computer and be able to see the problem you have so that they will be able to help you. So basically the learning objectives of this chapter is three. How can you speed up your apps, uh, shiny apps creation? How can you speed up making changes of your shiny app and quickly experiment after making changes? So we can, you can see this, um, uh, some kind of little diagram. This is the first one, development cycle. How can you create apps, an app? How can you make changes and experiment quickly? And the second part is debugging. So you actually need to find what's go wrong. And now after finding what's go wrong, then how to fix that thing. And lastly, after you find the error, if you are not be able to fix it, then you need to seek for help. Now you need to jump here how to look for help. So there are many places to look for help. And one of the most recommended places to look for is uh, RC Studio Shiny um, uh, group. And for you to look for help, you need to have a better sense or a better way to send out your code to other people so that they can help you and you help them by writing a better reference. So this is basically the summary of what this chapter is. And uh, um, my chapter, because it's not non-technical, it's self-content as well in the book. So there is a little bit of um, uh, um, live code in, in from my own end. All right. So um, as we have seen, um, the first thing is why we need that. And we explain this, you need to iterate faster when you invest in workflow. So there are two main workflows that you need to optimize while you're creating apps. The first one is creating apps. How can you uh, optimize way to create an app faster? Because we know whenever we open uh, a shiny, whenever we open an app, um, we will see that uh, we need to create some body of code that allow us to run or create shiny app. So there are two ways to quickly create shiny app or that kind of code. Um, number one is to type shiny. Um, I don't know if, um, yeah, so uh, uh, am I sharing my screen, um, my RCU? No. Uh, not at the moment, no, it's still the book down. Uh, uh, okay, right. Sure. Uh, okay, maybe I can. All right, what I want to do is, yeah, can you see my, my, my RCU? Am I sharing my RCU? No. No, no. Not yet, not yet. Uh, Ah, okay, I think I need to share the RCD as well. Oh, okay, You're right. I didn't share it. Oh, okay. I think I, I'm sharing right now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we ah, can okay. see it. Yeah. Right, okay. So, um, two ways to actually um, create apps quickly, and we are all used to this. Um, the first one is to type shiny in app. If you already have your app that are ready, and um, so you basically type shiny app and you see a prompt to insert your snippet uh, so for example here i have something like this i can just type shiny i can see shiny app so um this snippet just enter you have your um, skeletal of the shiny app so you just create it and the second way we just use it just come here and create shiny web app um also um 
you may need some time to create to embed shiny app in your markdown you can come here create markdown and create shiny um so we can create another example here using this and it can comes with populated um code and you can see the runtime is shiny and when we run this one um uh, you see for instance when we say this you can this guy so this is basically the um um there's uh, short ways to um quickly create um, our app now the next one is after you create um uh, a sh your app is how can you make changes and see the change faster so the first way is we should avoid clicking um run app here and use a keyboard shortcut which is this control for shift for as r this is a better way we can optimize our workflow but also we can also turn what is called auto reload which allows you to uh, for instance if we have our shiny app here okay yeah so if we have um, i'm showing my r studio right yeah yeah all right so if we have our app here for example i have um a little, little bit up here so instead for us to run app we can use shift control enter we can run our app so without running this but the second way is to turn what is called auto reload so the auto reload feature gives faster workflow than all of these ones you write some code save the code and experiment the changes automatically so let's see how that work can work so um that works um uh, if you come here they explain it from the book but what you need basically is um you need to have a script that will allows you to run your code so for instance this is a script called shiny uh, just a script and inside the script you type shiny run app because basically when we click when we click um run up here this tab when we click this tab what is basically is that it is calling shiny run app so now you don't want to be clicking this run app you want to automatically your app to be run so we will create a script we write this command that run the app automatically and we specify this option with the argument of auto reload when we do this we put this script inside the folder that contains our app and now here we have our app and now what we want to do is now if you look at this one here we want to as soon as we make changes we'll be able to see our changes so if you want that option you will not be using run app button but rather you will use another way to run your app so for you to do that you need to come to the job here when you come to the job here you need to set a start local job when you select start local job you specify the script we want to run which is basically this and the, the working environment which is this environment we are in and you can see start the job The job has not started. Maybe it's not. Okay, let me remove the job and select it. Okay, so all right. So let's select the script. This is the script you want to select. So the script that automatically run your uh, you specify to run node. You select it, and uh, let's select the. Okay, yeah, we are in the same thing, all right? So, right. So basically you select from this job, you select this small script that we put small code inside it and come to job and start this. When you do this, you select this thing 
and now you go to your console and now we have a function here which is called rs um, yeah uh, in the app you copy this um, r studio viewer right so we go to the console this one in here and so i don't know what happens um um right let me set it again hmm. all right let me set it again the last time if it works right so um move the app so let me select the script Mm. Book uh, you can also go click on shiny run on the left hand side. So if you cancel out of this, click shiny on shiny run. run. So cancel that. Click yeah. on shiny dash run on the left hand side. So over by mm -hmm. where the README is, other side. Run here. No, 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 no. Like uh, your files that you've opened are README app shiny dash run dash uh, dash r. Click oh, on that. Okay. Oh, oh. Go okay. over and no, no, no. Well, yes, but if you really wanted to run it through jobs, mm -hmm. um, you could click on jobs and then click the run start local job. Right. And yes. then that picks it up. Let me see. Right. Okay. Um, when we come to the console, but it's still listening over the console. So um, I don't know what happened, but I tried and it worked. So basically, um, uh, maybe someone can jump or I can just explain it. So basically the way I explain, um, then um, you specify this function, um, this function here, and we need to impute this uh, one uh, inside this function and it start running. So basically that is how it, I don't know what happened, but- I mean, uh, it's it's already running the viewer pane. Uh, oh. Because your oh, viewer yeah. pane is below. Mm -hmm. If you want it to like go to like another website, you can click on the box with the arrow next to the rectangle with the circular X. Mm. So right next to the stop sign, if you go just to the left of that, that'll pop it open to another web page. Okay. No, 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 no. So down, right. down in your viewer box, mm -hmm. Um, you see there's the stop sign, go one to your left. Ah, okay. The next one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Ah, okay. If you click on that, that'll then pop it out into, um, into a web page. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, sorry, I don't know what happened. So let's continue. So, um, um, right, so um, this is basically one of the uh, workflow that says so faster. And um, it allows one to quickly um, uh, experiment interactively. But uh, the disadvantage is that it is harder to debug because the app is running, it's a great process. So that is it. And also the last one is controlling the view. Um, so this is very obvious um, in the sense that uh, um, we can actually uh, run our app inside this viewer or we can allow it to run uh, the app. So. Here we can select to run in view or we can allow it to run in a new window. Uh, so basically this is obvious, um, but also the one that run in external browser open up your, in your browser, but um, it's useful for larger apps so that you see how it works in uh, real life. Um, so the one you can view here is basically to allow you to quickly experiment some smaller apps. So that is basically um, about the workflow. So basically this workflow allows us to quickly uh, create our apps and quickly make changes faster and go through it. So if you would like to uh, see more, oh gosh, uh, this is basically, uh, it explains a lot, the detail on how to run that thing um, quickly. Uh, uh, right. So 
Um, the next one is debugging. Um, yeah, as we have said, um, definitely something will go wrong, uh, but it takes experience to write code that works fine for the first time. So we need to really uh, invest to learn how to debug um, easily. And the specific focus um, for debugging Shiny is here we have three things. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, oh, this is repetition of that thing. So in Shiny, you can get an error, uh, which maybe is unexpected. And you see that, yes, you have an error. So this is a simple. The second one is you don't get any error. And the last one is everything works fine but your apps is not updating. So this ranges from the simple to the hardest on how to debug. Now, this one, you get unexpected error. How do you see it is you will get what is called trace back. And when you get it with trace back, how can you solve the issue is one, you can also use interactive debugger to solve the issue. Uh, if you don't get any error, but your result is not okay, you can use interactive debugger and combination of your investigative skills to pinpoint or find the error. And the last one is everything works, but the app is not updating. So you are debugging for the R skills doesn't matter here because this specific problem is for shiny only. So if you can debug in R, you need to add some skills for debugging shiny to help you to debug any problem that concern with your app is not updating. So, right. The first one we say you get an error. Yes, of course you can get an error and uh, you can fix them with trace back. So in every error that you can see it is accompanied with what is called trace back or call start, which literally is trace back through the sequence of calls that leads to the error. So uh, it is called trace back or call start. So in computing, that's what is called stack, which is called leave word, right? Leave word, last in, first out. So uh, that is why they call the function. Uh, printed in reverse order. So for instance, you call a functions, series of functions. So the first function that you call will be here, then followed by the second one, by the third one, and the fourth one. So the first function that you call will be at the bottom. That is what is called stack. So you start the function are called stack, last in, first out. So the trace back tool pinpoint the location of the error. So trace back to that you see in R, it really shows you or points you to an error, but it might not be really where the error is, but it will point you to the error. So this is an example um, we have here, series of function f, g, h, and f, we can see it called g of x, and g of x in turn is called h of x, and h of x is this function. So let's call f of three f of three give us four, which is right. But here we have something like this, which is x times two, and we call f of a. So this will generate an error. And with this error is called, um, it will generate what is called um, an error. And um, when you see this error, you need to understand what causes the error. For you to understand what causes the error, you can call a function called trace back. And this trace back points you to the, an error and the top of the stack point to an error. So as Hadley usually turns down the order of this. So as you can see, this is the first function as I have shown here, the first one here, second, third, fourth. So here the trace back also will show you because it's a stack. So the first one, the last one, the last to be called, as we can see here, the last to be called is this function. So the trace back will show you the last one. And the very last one on the stack is the offending function or 
one that we may suspect is causing the error. So um, as she, um, uh, how did he say he preferred to cliff the, um, um, the test bag output so that you can see um, the series, the sequence where the functions are called and uh, what happens. So here it means F called G and H and the stop. So basically, um, I think the idea is the top of the stack, the top of the press back, which is the one here, point to the error. So you may suspect, so here we can say, okay, right, when we run the press back, okay, we have the H of X. Uh, okay, we have some problem here. So we can come back and look at our function, which is this, ah, okay, we suppose not to multiply by a string here. Uh, this is what he's telling us, then we can quickly fix the problem. Now, this is general stress back in R, but uh, how can we apply this stress back in Shiny? So you say you can't use stress back in Shiny because you can't turn, run code while an app is running. So, but oh, fortunately, Shiny automatically prints stress back. So you see in normal R, when you have an error, for you to see the error, you need to run test back. So test back will show you the error. But in Shiny, you can't run test back to show you an error, but fortunately, Shiny automatically shows us the test back. And now here is an example of the, um, the, what we have um, uh, discussed previously, and Shiny will throw this error. And as you can see here, we have one, this um, hardly cut down the sequence of errors here, we have many errors. Um, so you can see from one here, he jumped to H1, H2, 95. So um, if you are running in your computer, you can see this stack of errors are very large. Um, they are not one H1, they are one, two, three, something like that, I guess. So now the same, um, the same uh, thing we have seen in normal R, um, the top of the stack here is the one that is offending function, the top of the stack. Now, Can I ask a crazy question? Sure. Does anybody know what the numbers next to the errors mean? So like 169, 168, 167, 95, 82, 81. I mean, I know like the the bracket app.r pound four means uh, that particular thing was called on line number four of the offending file. But I've never understood like what the numbers to the left mean. This one, this one. Yeah, that one. Right, okay. So um, um, when you run this code, okay. But I think we, we need to see this, All right. Um, right. Okay, so um, you can see here we have um, these very errors, uh, but there is an option, I think. Um, oh, stack. Hmm. So I can't remember on top of my head, um, there is an option that you can specify that full stack. Yeah, I think full stack. No, 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 yeah. Um, something called full stack. No? So um, there is an option called um, full stack here. I can't remember the, um, the option here where you, where you specify, uh, okay. Um, what do you call, okay, let me see something. Stack um, uh, test back, okay. Let me see this option, test back. Test. Oh, I'm just wondering what the number 169 in this case actually means. Um, okay, so um, I, I want to show you. Um, it shows the output here. When we have option here, press back, uh, we have what you, we can put here, full. No, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can check. So when we put this full press back, it will show us this sequence of number from one to 69. So which shows the sequence of how the program runs. So here you can see we have very small number. This is just a sequence of numbers that shows the sequence of running of the program. So had even I can remember on top of my head here, I can switch and say show full stack test back. When we say it is full, 
then we can see, see a number from one to 169. But here, by default, uh, it does not show the full. Uh, so I guess it is showing the most important part of the um, trace back, I guess. So that is that for that, um, yeah. So the, to answer your question um, here, 169, any numbers here? Uh, numbers that shows the sequence of running of your program, because number one, you run, you click run up, so it's given the process one. So for instance here, we can see here, we have one, two, three in the stack. So everything, what do we start first now here? We run up. So the run up is given number one. Can you see that? Then we have the next, next one will be given in sequence like this. So I think maybe this may answer, I don't know if this answer your question. Yeah, no, I, I looked further and it's options shiny dot full stack trace equals true. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That option will shows you uh, one to 169 and the numbers are showing the, um, the execution program, the numbers, each number is assigned to the screen. So right, let's move far, further. I uh, hope that answers the question. So um, here we can see that um, um, we said the top of the stack, it what points to the era, but here, what is the top of the stack? So to answer that question is the traceback issue that we have in Shiny differs from the traceback in normal R. So in normal R, we just see the function, we say, okay, this is the top of the stack. This is where the error is happening. But in Shiny, we have some process that are not related to the running of your program. So this is what Hadley explained here. The first one, run up, ignore anything before this. So this is related to the starting of your program. So this one here is related to starting of your Shiny app. So sometimes you may see something like this, um, source for in run app. So ignore anything that start from uh, after the run. So here, this one, we don't need to consider it. The next thing is some internal shiny code in charge of calling the reactive activations. So from this section, where is it? Okay. So from this section to here, these are internal shiny code that are responsible. And here also the last bit here, we can see dot up, dot up, dot up. These ones are also not related. The code that you have written, all the code we have written, they are not related to our problem. So if you look at this problem, you can see here we have inside our app, we have uh, this uh, float, we have this, and these are related to that. So what is the top of the stack? This is the top of the stack. So you don't, you don't care about this, which one that they have that are, um, uh, they have, uh, they have the app, app dot r, app dot r. They don't, you don't care about it. So what you care about is this one. So here, when we turn this one as hardly does, so this one, we don't care about it. And the last part here, we don't care about them. This one is the offending section of the code because this is where we call this thing. Can you see that out in the render output? So this is where we call so this is where the um, actually the problem is. Uh, so um, this is uh, the, the section of three part of shiny era stack. The part that calls shows the uh, that is responsible for starting the app. The part that contains the um, reactive expression and the last part. So you don't care about the first one, the last one, the first one. You care about something here, and the top one here as Hadi uh, shows us that is where the offending thing are. Right, so any question before we continue? Right, okay. Um, so how to fix the errors? Um, as we have seen here, uh, one way is to use, um, uh, what do you call, um, to use the, um, uh, to use the trace back. And another one is to use um, interactive debugger. Uh, so, we have identified errors using traceback and want to figure out what is causing it if you cannot be able to um, figure out from here. So we can use what is called interactive debugger to debug our code. 
And there are two ways to launch interactive debugger. Uh, so the first one is using browser. We attach browser to our code and that will call interactive debugger or we can specify that in, uh, we can use breakpoint in our studio uh, to uh, check from different section of the code and see where the error are. So um, this is um, the um, how to debug uh, the um, your R code. Um, uh, here in this section, we have um, uh, case studies that have not gone through here uh, because of the time. Um, so the last part is uh, getting help. So now we have seen um, the first part, development cycle, um, where we can create app quickly, whether by saving and also using auto reload, which I was not able to through it. it <laughs> It fails to work, um, uh, and uh, with auto reload, we can be able to make changes by using just control save. When we control save, it will automatically save our code. And um, yeah, and the next one we have seen, the last one we have seen is um, uh, you can use um, trace back to see what goes wrong and how to fix that. And the last one is how to look for help. So if you are not be able to solve your problem with um, this bag and uh, interactive debugger. The next thing is to go and look for help. Um, right, so that is um, this and how can you look for help? So for you to look for help, you just don't, uh, uh, don't actually copy all your code and send to someone or send it to, um, I can see chat, someone asked some question. Oh, all right, oh, okay. Okay, so um, so you don't just write, um, copy all your code and send it to someone. You need to write what is called reprex. And good reprex make it easy for others to help you debug your app. Uh, so let's see how we can uh, use reprex to make um, the life of our friend a little bit better to help us. So uh, how to make a reprex? So to create a reprex, I think this is how to is called. Is it reprex? Someone can help me. Is that right? It sounds okay to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, to make reprex, create a single self content file that contain everything needed from the, uh, your code. So when we say self content file, we mean you need to load all the libraries that you expect your code to have, everything in it. And before you send to someone, as Hadi said, we start a new fresh R session with that code that you intend to send to someone are running and still see if the error comes. But the potential problem is not just sharing your code, then it comes with the problem of um, sharing your data. Because um, ideally sometimes we have large amount of data that we are working on and uh, the, the data may be um, for security purpose or for some uh, personal reason you don't want to share your data. So um, that is one uh, challenge. Um, so to solve that challenge, we can use built-in data set to reproduce our error. So use um, built-in data set like MPG just to mimic what really happening and um, see if the error comes and that is good. If that doesn't work, create a simple data set and illustrate the problem. So for instance, here we can create a simple data set here, something like that, and just, um, this is not a true data set we're working, but just create a simple set of it. Um, if that doesn't work, um, we can create a subset of our data by using deep root. Um, and yeah, because our data set may be massive, so you can just create a subset of the data. And so these are three ways to just share your code um, and solve the issue of the data. And the last result is to provide complete app.r if reading the data from this seems irreducible part of the problem. So if that is the case, you can just zip down all the app.r 
and share it in GitHub for the files. So this is the last resort uh, that um, uh, all this doesn't work. Uh, you share and the, your friend that is trying to help you uh, was not able to reproduce. So you can just zip down everything and send them. And the last thing is make sure this is very important that you are using as relative paths. We all know what's um, relative and absolute fast. So to create a reprex, we need to make sure that uh, we are using absolute fast. And lastly, um, we need to make life easy for our friends that need to help us is to format our code. So if I'm writing my code, maybe I'm not writing it um, the way someone may easily understand it because I'm the one writing it and I will understand it the way I write it. So, but to share it with someone, you need to format it to a little bit standard that uh, uh, all people are using. So one of the widely used standard is, uh, of course, um, I'm not, uh, I'm a little bit biased, but hardly that report here is study by style guide. And there is a little nice um, adding um, styler, uh, I know. Um, so if, uh, if you can see here, um, I have the styler here. Um, so we have here yeah, styler. So here we can highlight our code here and we can use styler here, style selection. Uh, we, what's happening? Oh, okay. So, um, so with that, um, you can, uh, this plugin we can quickly um, allows you to style your code that will be easy for anybody to understand it. So how can we use uh, minimal reference? So this is how to make a reference, but also not only reference, but there is an idea of how can you make a minimalist representation of your error? For instance, you have a code which is 2,000 line of code. You are not expected to copy all those things and share it to someone, no. You need to make a minimal representation of your error. That is called, how can you make a minimal reference? Trim out all the code that is okay. That is trim out all the works that works fine. Because that way, you do not force the helper to understand the entire app. You want the helper to understand the specific error, trim out, remove everything that works fine. And this process that you, that when you are trying to trim out everything, leads you to discover the problem. So you don't have to look for someone else help. And a good way to find error code is to remove section of code from your application piece by piece. So when you have um, maybe um, uh, 200 line of code, just remove section, look at the section, remove them, discard them from, run the app, run it again. See? So that way you can uh, boil down to specific area where you have the problem. So if removing a particular piece of code makes the problem stop, it is likely that code that way. So this is a nice way to, uh, uh, you see to debug as well. So while trying to create a minimal reprex, you debug yourself. So this is uh, a good way um, someone, um, uh, they said, if you want to um, uh, solve the issue, your issue, try to talk the issue to someone. And while you are trying to explain it, you may try to find the answer. So this is just a, a kind of analogy to it. So this is an example of um, bad reprex that uh, I did get from the book. Um, so someone shared this code in R Studio Shiny group, and uh, one of the thing this code doesn't have. This code is using uh, it. She, I don't know, um, or he or she. Um, to need, uh, they need to um, load um, some library, um, not only Shiny, but they have not load that one, which is a problem if you share to someone, he may not necessarily from the looking old library that I needed to share. Um, and also the code is not style. Um, so you need to um, force the uh, person to help you to uh, understand everything. So how can we make beta reference? So this is a beta reference making it, uh, making the bad reference beta here. We load um, the necessary libraries and use styler to style the code. Hardly, um, and now we want to, yes. 
Okay. So um, we want to um, now we uh, we run this app and still gives us an error, but um, we now um, style it and loaded the needed package. So we want to trim down um, the unnecessarily part from this section of the app. Uh, so remove part of the app that con is independent with the error. So some part of the app um, that is these lines um, here, they are uh, and print and DF, they are independent of the error. So this one, these lines, we will can just discard them. Um, and the new server course reduce boils down to only these sections. Um, uh, and this section also when we run uh, with this server function, it still run, return the error. So we are good to go. We are in the process of making a minimal reference. And the next example is relatively um, sophisticated shiny technique. Um, so if we look at this, um, we are in the server here, but uh, you can see we have UI. So uh, this, as, uh, I don't know why it's called sophisticated. Uh, so because obviously um, what we have seen is we define our UI here um, in the UI, but um, as you can see here, we are in the server here and the UI in the server. So Hadley um, tries to uh, change the, the logic here to remove the UI and brings it to the uh, UI section. So that's what of the technique here he said. So uh, that's why he said the next example is a relatively sophisticated shiny techniques where the UI is generated in the server function. So uh, so here he, as you can see, he removed this one from the server and bring back it to the UI and bringing back this one to the UI and trying to run it, we see the error. So we catch where the error comes from. It is not from the server. It is this section of the code where we're trying to um, rearrange it. And uh, looking at each of the input, we are feeding to this uh, where the problem is. So you can see here, we have you know, this, we have, and we try to call this one from this section of the code, and we see the error. So now the problem is obvious, we haven't assigned minimum and maximum variables. So this voice down to this, we, the value, as you can see here, we haven't assigned anything. We just call this mean and this one here. So here we use the range, um, the range and the time we use the range function, which um, we can actually use uh, assigned to the mean and max for that thing. Uh, so that is, uh, I think the end part of this chapter for making a, so to recap, um, this section basically is all about, uh, this chapter is all about workflow and we have seen uh, three different um, <clears throat> ways to uh, make our workflow better, uh, to speed up the process of creating an app and also to invest much in our capacity to debug an app because confirm our error, uh, our app will lead to an error in some way. And finally, how can we, if we cannot fix it, how can we look for help? For you to look for help, you need to write a good reference. If you don't write a good reference, many people will not even attempt to help you, as Hadley said. Um, Hadley was, talk, uh, was saying that um, many people think that he cannot, he doesn't want help, but the moment you post a question, he will ask to have a good reference uh, so that he can. So, um, uh, so um, to sum it up, um, we need to write a good reference. A good reference attract help us. Uh, so I think that's the end of the presentation. Um, thank you very much for the listening and the, oh, the floor, I think is open for the questions. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks ever so much. Um, yeah, if anyone does have any questions, please um, uh, raise your voice uh, now. Uh, um, I didn't spy anything really in the in the chat room. Um, so, um, yeah. All right. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, is, is there anything? Uh, anyone wants to talk about the, the in addition to to the chapter? I, I noticed the, there was a 
Um, I, I may yeah. have um, um, a question about this um, uh, workflow. So you you just said that um, um, it saves time, uh, not just clicking the button, uh, run the app, uh, and going uh, the other way. You know, just saving the function. Uh, Did you try it? It is actually saving time because. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. So. Um, uh, can you repeat your question exactly, please? Just saying that um, um, it, I have, uh, uh, so it takes time for the app. Anytime you change something, even if it's a little thing. And obviously we are talking about an app, which is, uh, uh, um, is a bit uh, com more complicated, not just a simple one. Mm -hmm. It takes time anytime you reload it for, for opening it up again for you to see the changes that you have just made. Uh, uh, okay. So, so I'm, uh, I'm asking, uh, did you try it in what way, um, okay. with what kind of app uh, did you try okay. it this way? Okay. So Thanks. If, all right. So if I understand your question, maybe um, you're asking... Um, by using maybe not clicking um, uh, run app by using the um, shortcut to just um, uh, using keyboard shortcut just to uh, run the app. Uh, do I try it if it is faster? So I think it depends on your app. If it is a small app, it will just pop up uh, easily. But if it is a big app, um, what, how did, what we are saying here is not to see the output faster but the workflow, instead for you to go and move your cursor, go and click run app, but the workflow just control, shift enter to run the app, that is just a workflow. We are not talking about the time it takes to load your app. Okay. That, that time it takes to load your app depends on the complexity of your application. So the so complexity... The, the time that it takes to reload the app anytime you make a change, uh, it stays like that and it, even yeah, if it, yeah 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 okay. so that depends is, yeah. yeah so that depends on the complexity of your application if it is small app it just pop up in the second if it is some complex app which i've never done before i believe it will just like normal r code um if you have something heavy code with some heavy stuff it will take time to mm -hmm. even if you are using control shift enter it will take time to run. So this same also applies. The workflow we are talking about is how can you quickly do some stuff without using your mouse for instance to go and click, not, okay. not um, the app to run faster. Yes. Thank you. Um, you can see also from the chapter, there are two case studies I have not gone through because um, as you can see, it takes uh, the times, um, we have already have time, so. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. For yeah. Thanks. Listening. No, that was brilliant. Um, next week, um, I'm going to be talking about HTML and CSS and things like that uh, for the chapter six of the book, and then subsequently have the graphics chapter and the user feedback chapter. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a um, shiny app competition that our studio are running um which might be of interest to, to the people who are attending these uh book club meetings if anyone's got an idea for an app they'd like to build or that they'd like a bit of help building yeah. um feel free to to sort of discuss it within the um the office of data science uh, slack channel so so I have an idea. Um, I don't know if people, um, for those that have time, um, can we make a team and try to work for an app, um, maybe and make a submission as a group, if we can um, define a good idea for the blog lab, so we can hone our skills um, for writing um, the app. Uh, for instance, like me, I haven't write any app. This is just um, what I'm doing, like the exercise. So. I think maybe a good idea if we can 
find something good and work together as a team. Right. Um, okay, great. Well, um, thanks everyone. I think we're out of time really. Um, there, there were no exercises in this um, chapter. Um, uh, but yeah, if there's anything you want, what, that that's cropped up from this feel free to discuss it in the 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 uh, channel as well um okay great well uh, hopefully we'll see you all next week as well um cool thanks Sham. thanks shamsadine bye bye, bye, -bye. thank bye. you bye 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 thank you bye